five, six, seven, eight. Spring. Spring. Yeah. Spring. Sprung. Spring is sprung. <laughs> She's springing all over the place. She's springing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spring in stars all over. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Gilmore to Say with Tara and Haley. I'm Tara. This is Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi, Tara. Spring is sprung. What was this? I don't know. So have my hands. <laughs> Haley is very hands today. I know. You are about to say handsy. I, I was about like, to say handsy, like, but I didn't want to imply anything. Yeah. I'm real. I'm gesticulating a lot. If you're on YouTube, yeah. you're like, put those away. <laughs> <laughs> put those down. Yeah. Maybe there's an but audio speaking episode. Of, <laughs> speaking of the visual of it all, you look so cute. When you came on for our Thank meeting you. earlier, you look so beautiful. You were in your lavender era. You've Thank got you. lilacs, whether they're real or or not is out for debate. Yeah. You're wearing they, your lavender button down. Are those yeah. lilacs? Did I? No, I think are they hydrangeas? Actually fake hydrangeas. Yeah. Oh, we've okay. got all well, fake plants behind me because they look beautiful. Yeah, I've actually had them for a really long time and they really held up. But yeah, I can't do real flowers right now. Um, of well, sure, because yeah. spring has sprung. Spring has sprung, and I love the like aesthetic of spring. You know, because mm-hmm. I've even said that like I think that as a season, Logan is spring. Like I love the way it looks. I love like the cottage core, like folklore, mm. Betty's garden vibes. But mm. like me and spring, the biggest of enemies. I hate spring. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> rivals. You're little yeah. nemmies. Yeah, spring yeah. is your nemmy. Yeah, I had to get. Like I'm, I went to the ENT. I'm getting a CT of my sinuses because things are so it's bad. Because like so brutal. He there. basically just said, "Stay inside." In the meantime, and I was like, "Okay, I'll just observe." I'll bring it from the flowers the- inside. Yeah, I will <laughs> actually bring fake flowers inside, yeah. <laughs> and not Still the real the flowers vibes alive. Yeah, I keep it. the vibes. It's all about the vibes for me because I feel like spring is just so beautiful. You know. Mm. Just such really a nice is. time, which really leads us perfectly because I forgot to mention in our last episode what our book club picks are for April. Lay them um, on us. The first one for reading is sexy is called Practice Makes Perfect. And in this book, Annie owns a flower shop. So I feel like it's like perfect for spring. How fitting. Yeah. Oh, I love when characters own a flower shop I know. or a bookshop. It's giving, yeah. um, it's giving, oh my God, you've got mail. Yes, and her brother owns the town bakery. Um, she's one of four siblings, and I she's the be youngest. These people. Oh I know. <laughs> There's the first one. The first one is called When in Rome, and it's about her brother's romance. Um, and it's kind of it's not spoilerly spoilery for the first one, but Practice Makes Perfect is about Annie, who's the youngest of her four siblings. And they all see her as a baby, and they all see her as kind of like boring. And she's told so on a date. She's trying to find her life partner, fall in love, the love of her life. And the date she goes on tells her that she's boring. And so she decides she needs some practice, like practice dating, trying to be fun, figure out how to like find someone. And the person who is helping her is her brother's wife's bodyguard. Will, okay, I thought you were going to say it was her brother. I was like, this is a weird one. It's not that small of a town. <laughs> I was like, and then she practices. And then she practices her with her brother. No, I, like, I will no. not disparage Sarah Adams in that way because this is a great book. But it anyway, is keep the going. tattooed bodyguard of her sister-in-law who's like a pop star that if you read When in Rome, you'll learn all about her. Um, but he really likes um amelia but the thing uh, not amelia annie amelia is the person that he protects annie rather he really likes annie but he knows that he needs to stay away from her um but he can't help but help her um and i really love the little like end tagline here kind of made me start crying like but i'm so quick to cry (laughs) while reading it says amid steamy practice dates and strictly educational tutoring lessons annie discovers that there are more layers to will's usual stoic attitude as the lines of their friendship become dangerously blurred annie reconsiders her dream guy maybe her love life doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to be real okay teach me tonight i know like it just feels like and like this really does feel like someone you shouldn't be with but like you guys Mm. are gonna like get a little bit of like a love tutor um but it's in a small town, and Sarah Adams does small town really well if you want to read her first book. But I'm really excited about it because she really loves Gilmore Girls, and I'm going to try and get her on the podcast. Oh, I'm so excited. That sounds great. What a great yeah. pick. Per usual, you know. I always Thank think you, you knock it out of the park with these. And I think that you will like where you read I Will Follow because I have mentioned this before, and I mentioned this in our book club because I know we're doing kind of like two months, but I feel like these – two books that I've chosen, you can choose one or the other or read both, um, are kind of shorter, kind of easier to 
digest than books we've picked in the past. And there are two people that we really love. They kind of get disparaged quite a bit on the show. And those two people are Britney Spears and Jessica Simpson. So I decided for the month of April and May, we will read their memoirs. <laughs> wow. I love that. Yeah. So That's we're going to so read. What are they called? The Woman and Me is by Britney Spears. Of course. Um, it says, The Woman and Me is a brave and astonishing movie story, moving story about freedom, fame, motherhood, survival, faith, and hope. Um, mm. So I love the idea of like, you know, they don't have like a lot of great things to say about Britney's music, but I would like to, you know, get to know the the woman in her, the woman yeah. in me. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. Uh, exactly. But she and is. So the other one is, of course, Jessica Simpson, and it's called Open Book. And in this number one New York Times bestseller, Jessica reveals for the first time her inner monologue and most intimate struggles, guided by the journals she's kept since age 15 and brimming with her unique humor and down-to-earth humanity, is as inspiring as it is entertaining. Mm. So okay. I thought you can pick one to read over the next two months. You can pick both of them. Yeah. We will... We will do, on Fable, we'll do Jessica in a, uh, April, that's right, and then we'll do Brittany in May. So, whatever I love those to picks. Do. So perfect. Is the Britney Spears memoir the one that Michelle Williams uh, does the audiobook for? Oh, the audiobook for. I don't know. It's the one that came out last year, yes? Yes, That was yes, like it's breaking the, one. the internet? Yeah. That's Michelle Williams uh, narrating the audiobook, and apparently everybody wanted her to get nominated for like an Emmy or Grammy <laughs> or something yeah. for it. Like whatever award you would give to somebody for an audiobook, I believe it would be an Emmy. An Emmy. Um, I think they do audiobook Emmys. I think they do. And everybody was raving about her, you know, portrayal of reading. I, I don't know what yeah. you would call it. Of the performance, this book. I would the guess. The performance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I heard oh my gosh. absolutely. Maybe I'll have to listen to the audiobook then. Yeah. That's you might amazing. Have to. I've been looking for one because I like to do all my activities because, you know, like spring cleaning, that's kind of the mindset it's that I'm in the right time. now. It's so I need a time. book. So maybe I'll do that one. But those are our uh, two clubs, three books, kind of mm -hmm. unusual for this time. But um, I thought like I didn't really want to pick between the two of them. I kind of want to let you pick or you can do both. But I love that. um, that's the book Give club. everybody the agency to pick whichever they want. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's so fun. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited for spring. I'm excited for these books that you've chosen. And more specifically, I'm excited for this episode today. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> we were kind of stumped on how to do this because as you all know, we did How to Have a Gilmore Girls Fall. And then we kind of, of did a little How to Have a Gilmore Girls Winter. And here we are. We've arrived at the next season. It's time for spring. Yeah. And Haley today and as we're like, recording this is the first day of spring. It is? It's the first day of spring. Yeah. I thought the 22nd was the first day of spring. No, today's the first day of spring. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> I had no idea. It's deceiving because it's 40 degrees in yeah. New York right now. Last week it was spring here in New York, but yeah. this week it is very, very confusing. Technically, wow, well, today is spring. <laughs> today I learned something new. Anyway, not to be confused, though. So the day this airs, it is not the first day of spring. It is the day of this recording that it is the, the first, first day, day of spring, spring on the wow. 19th. Had no idea. I always thought it was on the 21st. I, don't I know think why. that's um, summer kind of rotates between like the 21st and the 22nd. Or fall? The 22nd. Fall as well. I don't know. It's I thought winter too. Well, I guess spring, spring, is a little, yeah. spring is a little outlier. It's a little rebel. Anyway, <laughs> with spring, you know, we were a little stumped because I feel like with fall and winter, very easy. Gilmore Girls is comfy, cozy, soup. Blanket, hunkering down. Yeah, soup and, blanket. <laughs> yeah, soup blanket. Exactly. Where spring, we were like, that's not really the first season we think of when we think of Stars Hollow. But as we got into it, we were like, wow, so much happens in the spring on this show. Yeah. And in a spring to remember, what we were talking about is that it doesn't necessarily feel like spring sometimes because of the wardrobe, because of like the mm. choices that they make that like, it's just like the other version of fall where it's not quite summer, it's not quite winter, but they're still wearing their corduroy, their Sherpa. So it kind of feels like fall until I feel like season four and five when they get a little bit into their pink era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pink era is big on the show for kind of winter into spring. I mean, speaking of the weather in New York, here in the Northeast, like spring really doesn't spring until April, May, because yeah. it's just so unpredictable. Like last week, we were just basking in 60 degree weather, and today it is 40 degrees. So yeah. I'm literally going to walk outside 
later today in my parka and it's the first day of spring. So I understand why some of those episodes do feel very like, oh, we're still kind of in winter. It just feels like winter is a very long extension until all of a sudden it's like graduation or end of school or yeah. something on Gilmore Girls. But I feel like they do really lean in in season four, especially in Girls in Bikinis, Boys Who in the Twist. Yes. Spring break. It's like this is the first time we're really talking about spring break, even though Rory definitely had spring break 100%. in high school. She but had something to so different about it happening in college. Spring break in college is very different as we come yeah. to find out, especially in that episode, because Rory and Paris feel very pressured to do spring break the college way and to go down to Florida and to, you know, see the girls in bikinis, see the boys doing the twist. And yeah. <laughs> it is just not their speed. It is not for them. They did it. They tried it. Great. But you just described why they did that, because it's like still 40 degrees in New York right now. 1,000%. <laughs> My mom just went to Florida because she was like, I need to get out of here. Your mom is girls in bikinis. My mom is a girl twist. in the... Yeah, she may be either one. I don't know. She's, <laughs> <laughs> she's either in a bikini or she's doing the twist. You know what I realized I just wrote in this is boys in bikinis. Like, I always mix that up. Like, I... I wrote that down as like us talking about spring break here. I wrote down boys in bikinis, girls doing the twist. Um, oh, you did? No, I wrote it in my notes. I was <laughs> not say, in our I shared don't see note. It. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I always do that. I just notice that I always mix that up. But that's so funny. They do find that that's not really for them. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. would say that is true of me too. That version of spring break is not for me. No, no. I, you know, I know that in the next season, she kind of spends her spring break at home, right? She kind of yeah. sticks around. She's with her mom. Like She wants to make some money because yes. she's going to work at the bookstore. The bookstore, right. Yeah. Like for me, uh, as much as I love a getaway and a little vacation, I know you love the beach. Mm -hmm. That yes. vibe of like spring break is not just that, not. Not that beach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to that beach. Can you do that again? Can you say spring break like that again? I will never do that ever <laughs> again. You got it once. Roll the tape. Spring break. <laughs> Perfect. I have it forever, really. <laughs> it's true. It is being recorded. Yeah. But I am the kind of person, and even in college I was this way, I would spend spring break at home. I yeah. loved it. I loved like coming home and I didn't live in a picturesque small town, but like my ideal spring break would be like going home. I'm going to have somebody bid on my basket. I am going to go to the Twickham house and day drink. I am going to go to the bookstore Say, and go to bid on my End. basket out of context, like going back to my hometown and having someone bid on my basket sounds like an innuendo. I am. I'm going to have somebody you can come you know, bid on my basket. You can come bid on my basket. <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But that's the kind of spring break that I, that's an ideal spring break. To yeah. Me. Like I want a break. I want a break from everything I'm doing, especially if I was going to a school as rigorous as Yale. Yeah. Like, I'm going to lay in my bed for four days straight. <laughs> I literally am go like, get me a sarcophagus and put me inside. <laughs> I don't want to see this is anyone. My, <laughs> my coffin spring break. <laughs> Precisely. Sure. That's all I want. What about I was, you? I think I know the answer, but what about you? How are mine, you spending your spring break? You know, like, same, not doing much. I went on, like, one spring break, like, quote unquote, spring break in college, and it was a cruise, but I went with my parents and my little sister because, like, she was in high school and our spring breaks aligned. Mm -hmm. But even that was, like, a lot for me. Like, I don't want to, like, I'm not a party person. I don't want to, like, go get, like, wasted on the beach. Like, it's seeming yeah. like these people are doing i don't want to go swim laps in the ocean like janet i want to sit i want a paris spring break i want to sit i want someone bringing me iced tea all day long and if not yes. i want to be at home correct i loved like we talked about this on patreon when we were covering girls in bikinis boys doing the twist which at the time we we're recording this we just released i yeah. was so surprised to hear that it is a lot of people's least favorite episode did you see yeah, that yeah so were like, many i Patreon don't like members. this episode yeah and i was like how how do you not i love that episode but i I like kind of forgot about all the little things that happen and the little ways that everybody is spending their spring break, even though they're all together. And I agree, Paris is where she's in her big sun hat and she's like drenched head to toe in sunscreen <laughs> and she's wearing her little white button down and she's under this big tent. She's got people bringing her chairs and bringing her fruit plates and bringing her iced tea. I'm like, that's that's me. 
that's that's the dream and if you that's can't do that the dream. i'm gonna be at home but the one of the things is i was like a lot of people are in high school or in college who listen to the podcast and they're going on spring break and they're doing the whole thing mm -hmm. but a lot of people are a lot older and i was like thinking of like in our past two episodes of like fall and winter like how to have the gilmore girls fall and winter those are like so easy but like i was like how could you have a spring break as an adult and i think that like the break part is really it it's like take mm -hmm. like a Friday evening and a Saturday, maybe a Sunday morning and be like, this is my break. I'm not going to plan anything like no one can make me do anything and just like spend those days exactly how you would want to, whether it's like filled with all the other things we're going to mention in this episode or just, you know, as Tara is going to do, get her sarcophagus and just. <laughs> <laughs> Veg no, out. I think I'd, I'd much prefer somebody to bid on my basket and go day drinking. With yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I have want. like a little weekend spring break, but just like That's zero true. in on the break part. Yeah, it's true. But speaking of a tisket a tasket, when I think of spring, even though we were talking about this when we were planning the episode, we we're like, what happens in the spring? And <laughs> Haley was like, well, there's a spring break episode. <laughs> I was like, there is. Yeah. I always forget about that. My go to, and I think I mentioned this in our fall like how to have a Gilmore Girls Fall episode that I felt like a Tisket a Tasket feels like a fall episode, fall episode. E yeah. even though it's a spring episode. It feels like a fall episode. But when I think of spring episodes, this is the first one that comes to mind because it is technically in the spring. It's one of my favorite episodes. It's a banger. Like it's yeah, a hit. It's no so notes. good. It's I'm pretty so, sure so good. this is the episode in uh, – on Patreon, where I was like starting to be Team Jess a little bit. Oh, like I remember being like, I've got all the Jess feels. Well, like, of course, how could you not? I mean, I this is the, this is kind of the only like spring event that happens. Not the only. I know they have the hay bale maze, and I know that you know there are events that happen in the spring, like the Twickham House happens in the spring, but that wasn't like a town event, like the bit of basket. Yeah, something that feels like it happens every single year. Everything that happens with the Twickham House and the museum and, and all of that is purely circumstantial. It is because old man Twickham has died. And <laughs> that is the only reason that this is happening. Whereas yeah. the bit of basket is an annual thing. It's like the dance marathon. So it feels like a town event. And there's something so special about it. It's such a pivotal episode. You get so many fun little dates on this yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, it's so, so good. So what I want to do is I want each of us to build a basket that someone would bid on. And then I want you to tell me and I'll tell you who is bidding on your basket. Okay. I'm excited. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? <laughs> you go first. Okay, I'll go first. Um, okay, so I am a basic, basic lady and I love a charcuterie board. Oh, I knew it. I knew you were going to charcuterie. <laughs> so Brett and I love to go on picnics, even here in the city. We love, we both live near Central Park. So we like to go to Central Park, lay out a little blanket, bring a bunch of stuff. And for me, I will always bring something that is like a charcuterie board. I'm talking like fresh fruit, crackers, cheeses, like veggies, dips, everything. And I feel like if I were to do that in Star's Hollow form, it would be Suki's pretzel basket. Oh, nice. So are you buying this from Suki? I'm I'm going to commission Suki to make it. Okay. Great. For me. Everything else I will, I would like to be able to eat it. Okay. Here's the question mark over Suki's basket for me. Is did they intend to eat it after all those hands touched it? Yeah, Suki's pretzel basket needs to go in a regular basket so yeah. that I am the first one to touch it. Correct. When it goes in my mouth. Yes. So <laughs> I would love to get a bunch of dips for the pretzel basket. That's kind of what you do Ooh, at the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like as you're eating it. Stuffed with something too. Yes, goat it is. cheese or something. Goat cheese with a goat cheese filling, which for me, I love goat cheese. Goat cheese and honey, like mm, mm. that to me is very nice. spring. Very spring. So I would love that. I would love to fill it with like fruits and maybe even little deli meats like prosciutto. I love Ooh, a prosciutto. Yes, love prosciutto. I love to make those little um, roses out of the pepperoni. <gasps> yes. I love I a pepperoni love rose. A pepperoni I'm, not rose. A, I'm not a pepperoni eater. Like I'll have it on my pizza. I know you're not a pizza fan. I'm not a pepperoni eater, but I am a pepperoni rose maker. Okay. I'll come so eat your pepperoni. Make, thank you. That also yes. sounded like <laughs> <laughs> Bit on my basket, eat my pepperoni. Anyway, I love to 
also kind of like I, I would love to make it look very picturesque inside of the pretzel basket, like make the rose almost like you would with a charcuterie board. So you kind of like it's it's the charcuterie board is inside the basket. So you don't have to pull anything out because that's what I was going to say. It's like it's a lot to bring yeah. out and assemble. You know what would be interesting is if the pretzel basket unfolded into a board. Whoa. Into like a platform. I'm getting really excited here. Yeah. Suki has a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Suki has a lot to really – it's not just a basket. It's also – it also unfolds into a yeah. board. Wow. Um, but I usually like to go to Trader Joe's here. So I would go to Dosey's Market, Trader Taylor's, if you will, and get all my stuff. <laughs> Trader Taylor's, of course. Or Trader, Trader Taylor's. Um, Troubadour, who works at Kinko's. <gasps> yes, Kinko's, Troubadour, Taylor's, Trader Joe's. To Troubadour Joe's. To Taylor, Trader Troubadour's. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those all were words. <laughs> <laughs> that was word salad. Um, anyway, I for drinks, I am a big iced tea girl. I'm a big LaCroix girl recess you know so like anything like that i'd probably go with an iced tea if we just had to bring one and have a nice little picnic blanket and have somebody bid on my basket that sounds amazing i would like to bid on your basket please <gasps> really <laughs> yeah i was hoping you'd say that as long as um there's like cheeses separated from everything else I'd yeah be no i like to, to do go. i like to separate everything um i don't like to kind of like like, I blend in the sense that there are sections of things when I build a charcuterie yes, board. but so they're people, not, like, all overlapping. No, 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 no. The only thing I might yeah. do is, like, sprinkle nuts, like, walnuts or almonds or something, like, for decor everywhere. Um, but that's really it. Yeah. That yeah. sounds great. Tell me about yours. Sure. So, in the same way, I am, like, going to equal parts uh, commission other people for this as well as bake because I'm kind of in my baking era right now I would say yeah been cooking and baking a lot oh I don't and know your sister-in-law has been baking amazing oh. bread so yes Mandy has been on like a sourdough like kick like she has been making bread every single day I have had fresh bread to eat for like I don't know weeks now like she makes amazing like, bread good flavors like the rosemary I'm sorry yes. ro put rosemary in anything like I'll sometimes decorate my charcuterie boards with rosemary because I just want it to be there. I yeah. So this is kind of going to be a carb basket where I have commissioned Mandy to make some breads for me. So I'm going to okay. have her do the rosemary garlic because she has perfected that and it is just so good. She added minced garlic the last time that she made it. Delightful. Um, she is talking about making a caramelized onion one. So I'm going to ask her to do that one because I okay. think that would be really good. And something fresh, which is a lemon dill. And so we're going to have some breads. I'm going to bring a little bit of olive oil, which like I could drink olive oil straight from the bottle, but like truly we will not be doing that at this picnic. You bring know what else I love is a jam. Mm, I love yes. to add a jam. Like speaking of the the goat cheese and honey that a combination that I love, I also love like a little, like a little um, fig, fig jam. jam. Yes. On a cracker. 100%. With some goat cheese. Yes. That sounds great. Oh, I love sounds it. Sounds simply amazing. So I'm going to bring some olive oil and some balsamic. And I feel like mixing those together, a little mm -hmm. fresh pepper, doing some dips. Um, maybe some, you know, I haven't thought about spreads. Um, I saw someone make a homemade caramelized onion dip the other day. I feel like that oh, would yeah. be really good with... Are you a hummus the, girl? I love hummus. I yes. I love hummus. So I'm also bringing some fruits. But I also want to have some sweets, so I'm going to mm. make some homemade um, – why am I forgetting the word of when a strawberry is covered in chocolate? Chocolate-covered strawberry. Um, <laughs> you know I love chocolate-covered strawberries. I know. So I'm going to do so that. Good. But I'm also going to do some like like a fruit salad, you know, not just half yes. the chocolate. Love a fruit salad. So good for you. But I'm also going to make some homemade croissants because I know that you know I've been trying to do that. Yes. And like make them vegan. And I'm going to put some jam on that, like a strawberry jam. And mm. just like just carbs, just straight up carbs Carb, and fruits. Carbs and fruits. Yeah. And we're going to have recess to drink, specifically the raspberry lemon or the strawberry rose because those are my two favorite. I'm drinking right recess right rose. now. Strawberry rose. It's true. If you're with us yeah. on YouTube, she is. Strawberry rose. I'm so surprised that that's that that has become one of your faves. I love it. Like, it's just, it. like, something so refreshing about it. My Every time my mom has one, she's like, these are spring summer drinks. We need to have these on a picnic. So we will be putting it in our basket. Mm -hmm. But I also, you said iced tea, and I was like, I've been making a lot of iced tea lately. I love iced tea. 
So iced maybe I'm going to throw that in too. Especially in the springtime. Can I tell you, when I was at home, living at home with my grandma during COVID, my best friend Liz, her mom lives up the street from my grandma and she was living with her mom at the time. So we would socially distanced at that point, of course, because this was like spring 2020. I would open my grandma's garage. We would sit outside with like a little table and two chairs and have iced tea and turkey sandwiches. And it was the highlight of my spring in 2020. It was so lovely. Like when I think of having iced tea and sandwiches, I just think of sitting with my best friend We're like, you know, approaching 30. We've known each other for decades now at this point. Just sitting, talking about like, hey, do you think the world's going to end tomorrow? I don't know. (laughs) Why would you like imagine y'all wearing little like white gloves, like little (laughs) lace white gloves, little doilies on the table? (laughs) Truly. It's true. It was so lovely. We just would be like, hey, like we'd grab like our lawn chairs, beach chairs, whatever, and just sit and bring out my grandma's little table. And we would just sit outside in the driveway and have a great That's time. That's nice. That would also be a good thing in your picnic basket is a turkey sandwich. Because I went for more of like a snack basket versus like a Me lunch too. basket. I feel like a picnic usually calls for a charcuterie board. But something else that I used to do a lot with my family and I still do whenever I go is we travel to Saratoga Springs, New York every summer. Um, it's like my mom's happy place. She's been going since the seventies and, um, we will have picnics sometimes where we go to the grocery store, we get rolls and we get deli meats like roast beef and turkey, and we will just sit and eat these sandwiches. And there's just something so satisfying about eating a, you know, sandwich with the people yeah. that you like. I kind of like the idea of also like making a picnic basket full of like build your own sandwich. Mm -hmm. That would be be very fun, especially with the bread that Mandy's making. Bread? Oh my gosh! Yes, I love it. I need the bread. I know. I didn't have any bread this morning because she uh, didn't make it in time. How rude! So I'm gonna have bread tomorrow, but I didn't have fresh bread today, and like it's really hard for me. Poor Mandy. No one has ever lived a life as hard as mine. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I'm so sorry. You're so brave. <laughs> anyway, who's bidding I on know. your basket? Who's who's winning the bid on your basket? Okay. So I thought about this a lot. And I actually think that I would like for Lorelai to bid on my basket and I will bid on hers. And we will have a nice little picnic. Whatever she put in there, I'm sure she put like some Pop-Tarts and like cookies and candies and things. Yeah. Two stale Pop-Tarts and a Slim Jim. Exactly. But I'm hoping that maybe she went with not stale Pop-Tarts and maybe exchange the Slim Jims for like some Malamars Mm. and so we've got a little bit of sweetness in her basket and then we can just actually eat mine and have hers just sitting next to my basket (laughs) and just talk and just chat because I thought about it like I was like do I want someone to romantically bid on my basket but I was Mm -hmm. like she didn't have anyone to bid on her basket and then Miss Patty set up someone to bid on her basket Mm -hmm. and then she dragged Luke to do it and I was like you know what just as like a pal just like a gal pal, I'm going to bid on her basket and then I'm going to make her bid on mine so that we can have a nice little snack moment. Yeah, maybe have what time. she actually needs is instead of somebody to clean out her rain gutters, she just needs some gal pal time. Yeah, she just needs a friend and we can sit and picnic on her lawn while Luke, or in this case Jess, cleans out her rain gutters. There you go. I think it's I great. I love that. Great plan. Maybe Mastermind fun. even. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. What about you? <laughs> Who's bidding on yours? Oh, if Jess does not bid on my basket, I'm leaving. I'm taking my basket and I'm (laughs) eating it by myself. If it's not Jess, I don't want it. But I will say another scenario that I think could be really fun is if I was kind of going the Lorelai angle and I somehow coerced Tom to bid on my (laughs) basket just so I could get some things done, you know, around my house, but also spend time with Tom. Oh, wait, you know, it'd be great. Mm. It's Jess and Tom both bidding on your basket. And in a strange turn of events, Tom, because he's an adult, has way more money than Jess. Yeah, that is a strange turn of events. (laughs) Outbids him. And he says, basket, basket maker. Jess, who didn't didn't bring enough money? money. (laughs) That would be so delicious. Yeah. More delicious than my basket. Yeah. Plot twist. Jess is empty-handed. He has to go have a picnic with Dean. (laughs) I would love to see that picnic. What if you didn't win? Like, what if, like, there was, like, a consequence to not bidding? It's, like, you had to go on a picnic with, like, like, there was, like, a terrible basket group, and you had to, like, pick one of them and be, like, ah, we're going on a picnic. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Or you had to go on a picnic with the other losers. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. If Jess and Dean both lost... And they had to go on a picnic together. I would have loved nothing more than to yeah. see that. That would have been a lot They'd of fun. They'd just get a pizza, sit by the 
pond, the lake that Jess gets pushed into. Really just like maybe just through all their woes. Into it again. Yeah. <laughs> maybe both of them. They get beat. Yeah. Lorelai needs a gal pal and they need just some just some time. Yeah. Just some just chat sit, time. Have a pizza, get to know each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's a healing spring. <laughs> it's true. The next question that we pose to each other is like, what IRL picnic would you want to go to from the picnics that actually happen? in a Tisket a Tasket. Like, which one would you want to go to in real life? Part of me wants to go to the Jackson one simply because, like, the effort that he had to go to to win Suki's basket back Mm -hmm. and then, like, casually propose to her. Like, that's cute. But I also really love the idea of the Luke one of, like, you know what? We're not going to eat what's in my basket. I'm going to eat what you made. (laughs) Like, I didn't actually have to put any effort forth because you are a cook. (laughs) It's true. It's oh, true. I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Because, like, maybe I want to go on the Jess one and not actually eat anything and just dangle our feet and banter with each other. I feel like the Jess one would be... An emotional picnic. <laughs> yours. It's an emotional picnic. Because what they do decide to do is go get a pizza and go book shopping. I that know. Like, they, like, I know picnic you don't like for pizza, a second. But, but I, I, I can get down with it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah, that I would kind be of like that. Like, so we're just right sitting... For you chill in and it's like actually you want to go do something else <laughs> you want to do something that are we your both allergies do? also acting up right now yeah <laughs> should we go inside <laughs> exactly i feel like that's the right yeah, one for you you're right you're right that's that's mine but i'm not going to eat uh, what whatever was in there because dean's an idiot dean, is dean an never would have fallen for that <laughs> oh i love it you know, I wrestled with this myself because I love the Suki and Jackson one. You mm-hmm. know that is my favorite proposal, makes me cry every time. However, I feel like the Suki and Jackson one is sweet because of the circumstances. The actual picnic itself, despite the fact that I love her basket, I love the pretzel, the whole thing. It's it's just kind of like, it's a picnic. Yeah. You know? Everything else, the circumstances make it special, right? Yeah. I do love, like, I, when I think of picnic, I think of Jackson laying on the blanket. Like, me that's too. a picnic to me. <laughs> me too. I love it. I think it's so sweet. So I'm inclined to pick that one. I also love the Jess and Murray one. I think it's very sweet. But again, the circumstances are what yeah. makes it very intriguing. The circumstances with Luke and Lorelai's do make it intriguing because there's so many undertones in their conversation while yeah. they're sitting in the gazebo. However... I think I would like that one. That's yeah. the one that I pick is Luke and Lorelai. I love the idea of somebody begrudgingly coming out to bit on your basket, looks inside and is like, two stale Pop-Tarts in a Slim Jim. I'm going to make us food. <laughs> like comes back with it. And you get to sit in the gazebo and eat some of your favorite food and drink coffee and, and just like chat because it does end up being a friend date, even though the two of them clearly have feelings for each other. Yeah. But like, it's just so good. Does he go back inside for brownies or something? Am I making that up? Or cake or... Oh, I don't remember. Doesn't he go back inside at the end of that? I might be making that up. But I'm just thinking about, like, you don't actually sit on the ground. <laughs> no, you get to someone, sit in the gazebo and Someone chat. prepare this for you. Yeah. yeah it's really nice. Yeah. It's so really maybe nice. neither of us actually want to go on a picnic. Maybe we, should, well, maybe we just, just want to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> sit and eat inside. Maybe I just want to sit down. <laughs> Happy spring. Just since true. Down. Anyway, happy spring. <laughs> so oh, the other major thing that happens, kind of speaking to events that happen and major life changes, is we get a lot of proposals, a lot of prom well one. One promposal and a lot of weddings yeah. that happen in the springtime. We're gonna kind of talk about our favorites and talk about which ones we love. Um, but just kind of outline them. Let's start with the weddings. So we get Suki's wedding in season two. Grand finale, everything building up to that is very spring, and her wedding itself is very spring. We get Liz's wedding, which is in last week fights this week tights, oh. where we get the Kinko's town troubadour <laughs> coming out, um, playing his little what is that a ukulele or is he a good is it a guitar? Mm. It's definitely not either of those. It's like it, a very yeah, fancy kind of say, guitar. I forget what it's called. It's but it's like a Renaissance wedding, so that's yes. like a very fun. The word is like on the. It's there, but I don't. Does it begin with an L. Is. I can't think of any words that start with L. Actually, great. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of L, Lane, 
Lynn <laughs> gets married in the spring. She does. She has a nice spring wedding. And then in season seven, fake Mia gets married in the spring. She does. That fake Mia. Yeah. Um, all very different weddings. All very different weddings. Because I actually forgot that Lane gets married in the spring. But I was Me like, too. timing wise, it is not winter. So therefore, it must be spring. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very, very good. <laughs> anyway. uh, proposals wise, we get Max's proposal to Lorelai. Of course. We get Jackson, of course, and Suki's engagement. We just talked about cute, cute, cute. So good. We get Lorelai proposing to Luke at the end of season five. We don't know if Lane gets engaged in season, in, in the spring season. I don't remember. I don't, I like, why does my, why does everything in me not want to count it? Because it just feels like, I think like technically it's like, uh, on the edge, like on cusp. the, that's a cusp winter spring. Right. Um, but I just want to call it winter because it's bleak. <laughs> okay. There it is. And then, of course, Logan proposes to Rory he at does. the end of season seven when it it is spring. Spring is springing. That he does. And we just get one promposal. But it's so good. Is it really? Is he promposing to Lane or to Mrs. Kim? I feel like the promposal is to Mrs. Kim about Lane. Yeah. For Lane. It's for Lane. Yeah. It's but not it's, for Mrs. Kim. No, no, no. But, it's just but it Mrs. is for Kim. Mrs. Kim. Because he wants her to let Lane go with mm-hmm. him. Fair. And not Valid. deal with all of the other nonsense that was surrounding this. So it's kind of um, it's kind of fun that Dave proposes to mrs kim to go with lane i would have loved something like that i would have loved any promposal did you ever get a promposal no me do you either. want me to propose to you sure spring it on me though <laughs> spring it on spring you? it don't tell me it's coming i want to be surprised <laughs> when's I'll prom forget. what is prom in our in this case i think we need to establish that and then i can we'll establish rules after but we got a you. lot to discuss <laughs> But a promposal, you know, I think that some of them have kind of gotten like a little out of hand. I do love oh the, gosh, they're the sometimes very I think, extreme. I don't think promposal was as big at the time because I wouldn't necessarily say that David's proposing to her. We're like, no, retroactively we're not talking that. like the signs and the, you know, all the things flash that people dance, do now. Flash mob, oh my gosh, brother. Flash mob. Yeah. Yeah. But. It just was a very grand gesture. I don't know that it was intended to be, but he felt like he needed to make one in order to get this very, very rigid mom to agree to let the two of them go to the prom together. So that's why I think if not, he probably would have been a lot more low key about it. Yeah. But it just had me thinking about promposals and the way that people ask each other to go to this very important dance in your teenage years. You know, yeah. it's something that I at least grew up going like looking forward to going to yeah and i i think like as i got closer i always hoped that someone would very formally ask me but i went to five proms in high school how many years did you go to high school i went to high school for four years i went to sophomore year i went to my boyfriend at the time he was a senior so i went to his senior prom um then i went to my junior prom with him the next year and then my senior year i went to three proms so i went to you other schools i went to the junior prom i went to someone else my friend steve i went with him as his date to um like the private catholic school prom and then i went to my own senior prom Mm. so i went to a total of five and i was asked twice my boyfriend didn't ask me to go when i was a sophomore because we were dating and I think he just, I think, I don't know, so long ago now, that I don't think he was, it was just like- quite a while ago. It was quite some time ago. <laughs> we're coming up on like almost, oh my God, we're coming up on like almost 20 years ago that I went to my first prom. But- <gasps> Oh my God. 17, <laughs> 17 years ago. That's insane. Um, but with that said, you know- When I was asked, it wasn't this like big formal thing. And then when I went to my senior prom, I asked somebody else to go with me. So I didn't do like a big formal thing. I just like pulled him out into the hallway and I was like very nervous and asked, do you want to go to the prom Where was he that you pulled him out into the hall? 
he was in the band room. I went with this guy who was in the band. His name was Pat. He was very, hey, very Pat. sweet. Hey, Shout Pat. Out Pat. <laughs> Ran into him on the street about eight years ago here in New York. We walked by each other and I was like, oh my God. And I remember I was with my best friend, Danielle, and we walked away and she was like, who's that? I was like, that's the guy I took that's to senior Pat. prom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I so random. Well. Like, like very, very sweet guy. I don't think I ever talked to him again, even after that night, not in any like negative way, just yeah. I had had a huge crush on him and I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go together. And it was, I think I think I remember it being fun. I don't really fully remember all of the events. It was so long ago, but <laughs> it was anyway, all ago. of that is to say, like I even had the opportunity to ask someone to go with me and I didn't make it a big deal, but yeah. there was kind of this pressure put on it to be like this big grandiose gesture. And what I love about Dave's here is that the reason for such a gesture was because of the circumstances, but it didn't, it was big without being like egregious. It wasn't like a big sign. If you've gotten, if you've done this to someone or if you've gotten a big sign, it's prom cute. Posing, it's very cute. It's I'm very not, teenager. I love it's it. It's so fun. But with Dave, it was very just like, this is who I am. It's almost I'm like an audition myself. to be her date. Yes. He's like laying his entire soul on the table for Mrs. Kim, <laughs> reads the Bible in one night just so he can go to one dance with yeah. Lane Kim. And I love that he does that because I feel like Lane, like a lot like you mentioned that you like had always looked forward to going to your prom, that that's how Lane is, that she's built that up in her mind, that she like is so excited about this. And so to have like that outsized excitement and enthusiasm for this thing and then to have this person recognize that and be like... I am going to this damn prom with you. Like whatever it takes. Water. I'm going to read the Bible in one night. I'm going to put everything on the table, like holding nothing back, leaving everything on the floor for your mom. And she <laughs> didn't even she didn't even ask him to. And that was no. the part that I really loved is that I felt like getting grand gestures like this felt like something I had to ask for when I was younger. And there was just something so lovely and iconic about him. He didn't he didn't have to ask her. He knew exactly what she wanted. And he gave it to her. Yeah. It was great. Do we think, before we get into like the proposals of it all, do we think that this is more romantic than all of the proposals that happened in the spring? It depends on your barometer for romance, right? I think that Suki and Jackson's possibly. Yeah, I think because it comes from a teenager, it's so like young teenage young romance, love. you know, and you you do things like that, you know, when you're a teenager. And I, I just think that that, yeah, it was very sweet. It was very um, innocent. Like it just had a lot of um, purity. Like it was so pure. You know what I mean? Yeah. His intentions were so pure. Cinnamon. And yeah. I love I love that he did that. I guess yes. I think though that 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 the reason that it was so heartfelt is because, you know, he's a teenager and Yeah. He really that's, you know, really he put a lot it. of thought into it and I think that when you become an adult, it doesn't mean you can't put thought and heartfelt energy into a proposal you should. Yeah, but, I was about to say it should know, be almost like the other way around. Like it should Of course, but I think that with with everything that we've discussed on this podcast, we've noted that a lot of the proposals have sometimes, if not often, been a solution to a problem or a solution to conflict. Yeah. And so that's what I mean by that. You know, with yeah. teenagers, I guess you could argue that his proposal was a little bit of a solution to conflict. I know. I was about to say that because we did an episode back in 2022, I think summer of 2022, about proposals mm. um, and engagements. And these... Uh, like all of them, but these are just specifically the ones in spring, but that all proposals kind of happen in a time of conflict or turmoil and as a solution to whatever's going on. Um, and Dave's is as well. Um, yeah, not no. I think that's, again, the reason why he comes to Mrs. Kim with this speech is yeah. because he's saying, you know, I know that you're upset. I know that you're mad at us, but here is who I am. I, this is everything that I could possibly give to you to tell you that I'm going to like your daughter is in good hands with me. And, uh, you know, I don't know that he necessarily would have done that if there wasn't conflict or I don't think he would have felt like he had to do that if there wasn't conflict. You know what yeah. I mean? 
No, so, I mean, yeah, he just would have gone with her. <laughs> they would have yeah. just, she would have just said, okay, I'm going to go with Dave. There you go. Yeah. But yes, I do it. think that this was, I do think this was very sincere, but I also think Jackson's was very sincere. I also think that Lorelai's was very sincere. The ones where I don't think they're as sincere as maybe Max, I think by the time he got her the yellow daisies, maybe there was some sincerity to that. But I, I think that again, it was a solution of the problem. It was a way to say you're mine. Like I want yeah. everybody to know you're mine. And it's like, they were actually literally fighting and he was like, yeah, let's get married. And it's like, Oh, yeah. okay. So like that wouldn't, that one feels like wrong because it really felt like a solution to end totally. the fight and i don't think that's a good solution to ever end a fight yeah um, and i and think with suki and ja- oh. oh sorry god no i was just saying with suki and jackson's i felt like it was kind of similar where it was like we should move in together they were like we shouldn't move in together we should just get married and it's like they've kind of been like arguing almost and that this is kind of how it ends and it's not like in any way Similar to Max and Lorelai because like no. they were like already on that path and like Suki they were really 1, wanted to move in together. Thousand percent on that yeah. path. Yeah. Whereas I feel like Max and Lorelai, it was a solution to the problem. I yeah. don't feel like with Jackson and Suki, it was a solution to the problem. It was it the was next step. The next step. Yeah. yeah. Like it was. It was almost like you know when you're walking up a set of stairs and you choose to like walk up like two steps instead like you skip a step that yeah (laughs) thank you so much for demonstrating um it's okay i explained walking in a recent patreon episode that's what i heard (laughs) (laughs) i read that on our patreon comments i was like i don't remember that but yeah i defined walking to you putting one foot in front of the other and getting from place to place that's what i said (laughs) well thank you (laughs) it's true (laughs) that is walking but with like skipping a step when you kind of are going you're moving at a similar pace yeah it's just that you're choosing to skip a step and i feel like for them that's where they were at they were like why move in together when we're also like we're so ready to get married yeah and i just i think that his delivery was so adorable i just just i love it all and very different than max being like because they were not ready to get married no in any way shape or form they've been dating for five minutes and he was like let's get married because i saw you with another guy and that made me feel a certain kind of way. So let's yeah. get married. Because I it's, don't want you to, I don't want to see you with any other guy. Mm, I don't know. Totally. Lots of thoughts on that. And with Logan, I do feel like it was heartfelt, but because it was just so out of pocket and written by people that I just don't think had any business writing that storyline for that character, I just can't get behind it. No, I've never been able to. We've talked so, extensively about that. We, have. we everybody knows where we stand on that. But which of these would you want? The Jackson. In terms, you'd want the Jackson. Me too. The Suki Jackson, because it's just like of all of them, it's just like the sweetest. It's the most casual. It's calm. It's also, it's, it's very. It's just the two of them. Yeah, they're like and around I love that a bunch about of people Lorelei and Luke's yeah. as well. But like I agree it's just very sweet it's very casual Uh, there's nothing wrong with this build-up and i know people do like you said flash mobs for not just promposals but proposals and i hate that (laughs) i thought when i was younger i wanted something like that i wanted something grandiose i wanted to be proposed to in front of the fucking eiffel tower like if someone did a flash mob in front of the eiffel tower do you really think younger you would have been like that's perfect yeah (laughs) That's like my nightmare. Truly, I, I've had a nightmare about now that. Now that is my nightmare. <laughs> but I think at the time I was like, I wanted everything to be big. And yeah. there is just nothing sweeter to me because a proposal is really about two people. Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. It, it's about the two people. I will say that I don't mind Zach and Lane's proposal. I know that it was... Really? In front, yeah. I know that the it was diner? in front of the diner, and I know it was in front of everybody, but it was in front of people that know Lane. He does really put her on the spot, and I don't necessarily think she should have said yes. But knowing the direction that it's going in, the thing is, is that I feel like Zach is just like a giant baby, but I appreciate Confirmed. and respect the fact that he walked in, owned the fact that he fucked up, and then was like, I want to marry you. It's not I giving Max to you, though. 
No, because Zach actually went away and thought about it. Yeah. I know Max takes a step away and thinks about it and comes back with the yellow daisies. But no. It's like I'm always expecting the bare minimum, like below the floor standard from Zach. So like I know. maybe that's plays into it too. Because <laughs> yeah. like, to that effect, the Lorelai one, I kind of appreciate her proposing to him because what Luke is like exuding and explaining that moment is what you want from a partner. It's like someone who is like all in 100% on the things that you care about. And he's like, we're getting Rory back to school. Like yeah. she is not dropping out. I will drag her from class to class. We will make a schedule. And she's just like, yeah, she's just watching me. him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. I do love that proposal. I really do. Yeah. With Zach, I put it a notch above Max's only because I do think he took a step back to think about it. Do I think he necessarily needed to ambush her with that? No. Do I think that that's a solution to a problem? No. Do I think they had things <laughs> they need to work on? 1,000%. Yes. <laughs> um, but I don't necessarily mind it. Like all of okay. these are with uh, – Logan's is at the bottom of the barrel for me. Yeah. It's like Logan. if I had to rank them, it would be Logan at the bottom, then Max, then Zach, then – Lorelai and Luke, then Suki and Jackson. I think that's a good list. That's what that's what it would be for me. Um, I think that mine is the same. Yeah, yeah. Like and that's the thing is that Zach and Lanes is just mid for me. It's just is, it's like <laughs> yeah. It's Zach. And I'm Lane. happy <laughs> that Lane is getting what she seemingly wants. Do I think she should have said yes? No, but. I, I'm happy that she's getting what she wanted from this person yeah. that she seems to want to spend the rest of her life with. So, yeah. Of them, though, Max and um, Jackson offer the most springish of proposals. Like they really that, like, do. The vibe. Because it's like kind of like wedding season. It like feels romantic because like everything's blooming. So you want to like propose to someone in front of a cherry tree, mm -hmm, the cherry blossoms mm -hmm. with yeah. a field of tulips behind them. Like that's true. Sort of with a I thousand yellow only, daisies. <laughs> I was going to say the only reason that I would maybe put Max and Zach's neck and neck is because I do love the proposal with the daisies. Okay. I do love that he takes something that she says in like, no, this yes. is all wrong. This is all wrong. What are you doing? It should be this, 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 and this. And he delivers that to her and says, I do really want this with you. I don't know that I believe him. Like, I think he believes it. He totally believes it. But I don't think that that was the best solution to a problem. So maybe I actually take back what I said and I put them neck and neck. Could you maybe do Logan at the bottom and then Max Initial at Lorelai's house? Mm -hmm. Zach, Zach and then Daisy's? Max at the Independence Inn? Yes. That's probably I what I would do. Yeah. I think that's right. where I would go to. We split them in two because yeah. it is kind of two different proposals. That's what I would do. Yeah. I think You're so right. as well. Because I love that moment. I love that he gives that to us. Like, it is iconic. I love the image of her on the phone standing in the room full of daisies. Like, it's just so great. You know what other proposal? We don't know how it went down, but it does present itself in the spring. Dean and Lindsay. Oh, my gosh. You're so right. It just <gasps> occurred to me. I think they were at the arcade and he was like, let's get married. I don't have any more quarters. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I really hope it was that. It's like, it's buy one, get one free, but like only if we buy. So like if we split the first one, we get the second one free together, but only if we're yeah. married. Uh-huh. Hey, do you want to get married? You want to get married? Buy no, I free. really think what happened, and we've talked about this, is that she watched him get into the fight with Jess. They had a conversation about it, and that was when he proposed to her. Yeah. So once again, I like the arcade story better. <laughs> I do too. Very vividly painted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that when it comes to proposals, something that is intimate is always better. Always the way to go. Yeah. And I think if you're going to make a grand gesture, I think Max's was pretty grand. And I do think that that would give me cause to be like, wow, this person's serious. Look at all these yeah. flowers. <laughs> totally. Can you see all these flowers? There's no way that they're they're joke in here exactly they're they in it business they are they're all standing in. on business they're all in <laughs> sounds really expensive honestly but yeah i think that i too would prefer the intimacy that comes with uh suki and jackson's proposal or lorelei and luke's i i agree with you that i love that lorelei is just watching him and 
I love watching her soften as she's so concerned. I know. And the sees camera him. stays on her. Like, I can't wait to get there. We're almost oh, to season too. five. We're almost, We're the almost there. And I just love watching her face as she watches him. Oh, I'm getting chilly. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're both really good. And I think that I would want either one of those things. Yeah. I used to want the the grand gesture. And now I think that scaling down is... You know, but as far as grand gestures go, I would still accept the Max Flowers one because that was like me too. Please take over my place of work with flowers. Yes, and like only if you're going to go grand there. gesture, that's the grand gesture. Oh, yeah. Do something for me that you know that I want or you know that I like. Not something you think is going to be the flashiest. I don't yeah. think Max did that because it was flashy. Grand and flashy don't have to be synonymous. He did it because she said she said yeah. it. That's yeah. what she wanted. Yes. Totally. Anyway, which wedding of these would you would be your cup of tea? I want to pick Suki's because it's like so nostalgic. It's at the Independence Inn. It's like I know that like that's it's the kiss, but I just love Liz's wedding. I love the flowers. You know, last night I was having this like conundrum. I was about to watch last week fights this week tights to get into the mood to get into the mm-hmm. mode. Yeah, and I just like I like hemmed and hawed over it because I was like we were about to get down Patreon because this mm-hmm. week is episode 18 after or tick 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 boom oh my gosh too many tick, ticks tick, 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 um, tick, tick, boom. exactly um is it this Friday or it was last Friday rather sorry I got my dates mixed up this week is after boom <laughs> I, I know what's going on, we but know. we're about to get there. And I was like, ooh, do I want to watch it before we actually are going to talk about it? Because mm-hmm. like, I want it to be fresh. I want it to be there. And so I decided not to watch it, um, especially because we were like getting like answers. We asked a question on an Instagram story about spring and everyone was sending in all these things. I was like, oh my God, I want to watch that episode so bad. I know. Because it's like the fro- flower crown and the reflecting light. And like, I love that like they come up on like the little, is it a little carriage that they come up in? Yeah. And like, Jess is there and he's walking Liz down the aisle and the flowers and the Renaissance Festival and just like it's so nice. I love it's it. It's really nice. So I'm gonna pick that one even and I didn't watch it specifically. I wanted to, but I decided to save it for Patreon for our pals. <laughs> I I understand. I have a tough time now. Well, Brett and I are kind of slowly approaching like the middle of season four and I want us to get there because I notice so many things when we're watching together because I'm so intent. Whereas when I'm watching for Patreon, I'm there to take notes, right? And there's just something different about really absorbing everything while you're watching it with someone who's never seen it before because you notice every nook and cranny. Yeah. So I'm trying to get us caught up so that I can do like that watch and then take notes. But I understand because you want it to be fresh. You want it to be like right there yeah. for you to kind of pull from. But I love that wedding. I think that it is so cute. I love that there are so many touches of Liz and TJ. I'm not a Renaissance fair person when it comes to, like I would attend one, but it's not like my cup of tea as far as a theme that I would pick for my wedding. Oh, yes. Um, So I would have to say Suki's. But what I do love about Liz and TJ's wedding is I love them getting married in front of the gazebo. So a la, yeah. you know, Luke and Lorelai getting married in the gazebo. That's actually kind of my dream is to like in the middle of the night, just be like, we're going to get married. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And have a it little, would be so fun. A little gazebo wedding with just you and your daughters and her pajamas and, then actually, and you're dressed up for some reason. <laughs> but actually do it the next day in front of everybody else. I think yeah. it's so fun. I can but marry we're talking you. About s- I'm ordained. You're perfect. You're ordained. Great. Yeah. But we're talking about spring weddings. Suki's for me bar none the best. I love the the center of town gazebo dancing in the town square to reflecting light. Like I'd like to just take that yes. out of it. Luke and be like, well, waltz. Luke can waltz. Like it'd be very fun to have your reception in the town square. Oh, to be like, we're yeah. going to get married in the backyard of the Independence Inn, which is very important to Suki, like a place that is very important to you. Get married there and then have the reception in the time squ- in the town square. In Times Square. Not Times Square. <laughs> I do not want what any a- I do not want any of like the Cookie Monster or Elmo or King Kong. I don't want any <laughs> Make of them. A cowboy. There. Oh wow. No, I think it kind of feel like um Hammers and Veils, Lorelai's bachelor. No, That's not bachelor, what I want. her bridal shower. Her, her bridal, bridal shower. shower. I Engagement love when party. the two of them are sitting in the middle of everything. And yeah. we'll talk about that for summer. But like, I love that. And I love the the girls dancing in the gazebo and Love Will Keep Us Together by Captain and Tennille is playing. I just yeah. love it. It's so Aww, cute. Oh, yeah. I love it too. But I know that you love Suki's wedding simply also because of the episode of Hello. like little kiss. Um, little kiss. 
little kiss kiss. Um, but the circumstance of, of like it's Suki's wedding. And like, I think the one of the reasons that Liz's wedding kind of stands out to me is because we really see that one unfold. Mm. Whereas with um, Suki and Jackson, we wedding, don't see it. We don't see it. We just um, see all the fanfare happening around it. We get to see some of the aesthetic, the but context, we don't actually get to see hoopla. the wedding itself. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. So I think that that is part of it, but I do love her dress and the cake and everything surrounding it. The one thing I would take from Lane's wedding is the tearaway dress. <gasps> yeah, or the yummy bartenders. Yeah, I, I think that that is so fun. I Build also love that there is a, <laughs> I love that there is the balance of catering to your family and giving them what they want yeah. and also having the flair of what you want. Yeah, that's kind of what my sister-in-law and brother did. I don't know why I led with sister-in-law. I should have led with brother. It's my I always, I always do as well, even though Chase is your brother. <laughs> he is my Mandy brother. Mandy being your sister-in-law, I don't know why I always just I always default at the forefront. Friend. I love him dearly. But um, we had like a little bit of like a family wedding beforehand. And I married them in our backyard before mm-hmm. we went to Italy for like the wedding that they wanted. Um, so I think that's always fun to have like, you know, uh, make sure that your family feels included. Because like, I know that like a engagement is about the two of you but like a marriage is bringing two families together and i think that that Mm. is really important to have all of them there like if they can't be you know going to italy that's kind of like so i think that it's nice what lane did for her mom she didn't have to because it kind of there was kind of that separation but she Mm -hmm. still did it and i love that no i really liked it me too yeah um, but you're going to a wedding soon. I feel like I am going to a wedding next week. I'm very yeah. Excited. You're falling perfectly into spring. I really am. And it's funny. So it's going to be kind of like, yeah, rock and roll, kind of like Zach and Lane. She's going to have a tearaway um, dress? She's not going to have a tearaway dress. So Brett's sister Scarlett is getting married next week. When this is airing, I believe she will be getting married this weekend. This weekend. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, what day is it? What time is it? Where am I? <laughs> I'm in New York. <laughs> We're right here. Um, so in a couple days, by the time this airs, I will be leaving to go to New Orleans. Basically, what they're doing, which I love, is they got engaged at the end of January, middle middle end of January, and they're getting married next week. So they just were like, 50 friends, let's go to a chapel in New Orleans, and they that's where she's kind from. Of, yes, they kind of threw everything together very fast, which I love. Nancy, Brett's mom, of course, is handling so much. She's having the best time, I think. I hope. I hope you're okay. <laughs> I hope you're um, okay, Nancy. <laughs> but um, she came here, Nancy. She came to New York to go dress shopping with Scarlett during uh, Super Bowl weekend. So we came and celebrated Nancy and her husband Tim's birthdays. And we, you know, Scarlett and uh, her mom, they went dress shopping and they found this amazing dress at Anthropology, and it's oh a gown. Oh my gosh, I love Beholden. Beholden is so great. And so they found this amazing dress. Of course, the only one that they had left to order was in her size. So it's perfect. Of course. Fate, as they call it. Fate. They find this beautiful gown and she is chopping it into a mini dress. Like, <gasps> Oh it, they're my going gosh, like my dream. Very 1960s. And yeah. I love it. Chopping it. And they are turning the excess fabric into this beautiful bubble coat. Like Scarlett ordered this 1960s pattern from, I believe, Etsy or just yeah. somewhere on the internet to make this beautiful like 1960s bubble coat. And she sent it off to somebody to make. And I am That's so, so cool. excited. She's just like... Her and Dave are like the, her fiance are like the coolest people I know. And Scarlett's also gorgeous and could wear any, like she could wear a potato sack and look stunning. Like that is the kind of person that she is. And I just love that she is incorporating so much of her personality into this wedding. So it is not a tearaway, but it is very like short mini but dress. She like we're taking away this gown prior exactly. to <laughs> exactly she is taking this and making it her own which i think is very fun and they're both like dave is a musician they're very like they're artists and they're just they're so cool they're two yeah. of the coolest people i know and i'm really excited to see how they've like taken this and incorporated like every bit of their personality into it and we get to spend a few days in new orleans it's gonna be great 
Yeah, that's so spring of you to go to a wedding. But I feel like that's so Gilmore Girls too, because I feel like each of these weddings like really speaks to the personality of the person of like Lane's wedding, like of course Liz's and Suki's being like very classic at the Independence mm-hmm. Inn. Fake, mm-hmm. fake Mia, like it's at her house and somewhere other yeah. state where we that don't felt like very care about. Personal. Yeah, yeah, she was like, you know, this is me. I'm getting married at my house. I think that's very personalized to who she is and her new husband. And we wish them all the best. But we'd like to know where real Mia is. So. <laughs> what have you done with real Mia? Fake Mia. <laughs> who are you and what have you done with real Mia? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of weddings, there are a lot of life changes that happen in yeah. these spring episodes. Specifically opening an inn, grand opening of a business because – Taylor, of course, tries to open the soda shop. <laughs> the grand opening is canceled. <laughs> I love that part. That's one oh of my, my favorite gosh. Taylor moments. <laughs> there are, interestingly, a handful of funerals that happen as well. Um, yeah. Fran passes in the spring. Old Man Twickham passes in the spring. Gran passes kind of in the spring. Yeah, the spring. third Lorelei is a little bit like winter cusp. Yeah, winter cusp. It's before girls in bikinis, yeah? Yeah. So, um, but also there are a lot of graduations. Yeah, it feels like happen. just like a moment of like, you know, new beginnings, like you said, but like things coming to an end or you're making big life choices because like the season's ending and they got to draw us in next year. But I was trying to think about like how to incorporate that into your own life. And maybe like now is the time to revisit your New Year's resolutions. Now that I'm the days to. are longer, yeah, the sun is out, like... It just feels like the time to like mm-hmm. now you can maybe make your life changes now that you've like hibernated because mm-hmm. um, we're starting, the bears are the the bears are so we can do it. They're just waking <laughs> up. <laughs> so they're just waking up. So like we are just getting started and that's fine because yeah. yeah. I feel like we're both kind of doing like big like I guess businessy things as you would say you started your new podcast and just like her and that's getting underway. It I'm working is. on editing my book and I feel yes. like it's just like us moving into new things, doing your little New Year's resolutions in like the new season. Change with the seasons, if you will. Yeah, springtime is the time to kind of, re. you kind of spend, not to break it down into business talk, but like quarter one, evaluating what your year is going to look like. And admittedly, when it comes to my New Year's resolutions, I, you know, I like to name my year and I like to kind of set some intentions, but I don't really make resolutions. I haven't really felt like I've gotten started with that. And speaking to the year of sage, which is what I decided my year was going to be, I feel like the green kind of coming out in the springtime feels like the blossoming of this year of sage for me. I feel like I've still been in hibernation mode. I've still been in kind of a little bit of survival mode these first couple months. And now I feel like everything is starting to bloom. Yeah, there's an a song on Casey Musgrave's new album called Jade Green that I feel like would fit very well into your sage year and like what it is going to be because she just released a new album that I feel like would fit very well with you. Well, okay. I will check it out. Give it a little listen. You know, with mine, I feel like um, I'm uh, bursting at the seams to change my color and like change my intention for the year. Um, Really? Yes. I'm not going to, but I think that it's very indicative that the lavender year is working because mm. it's like supposed to be very like settling, relaxed, healing. Mm. And I think that like part of me is like wanting to be like, okay, we're done. Next thing. But I want to like actually take the time and like make that like sustainable before mm. I move on. Um, and yeah, like I really want to, I already have my color picked out for next year, which I already mentioned. I know you do. Um, but I'm like, so like part of me is like, I'm just going to change it. I'm just mid year change. And I'm like, no. Part of like the lavender year is like like slowly building towards the next thing so that like the foundation of this is sturdy and stable and won't fall down Mm -hmm. when I build things on top of it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, at least you have a color for next year. I do. You've got such a head start. (laughs) I'm so prepared. But like, I feel like maybe if you didn't pick a color, this would be a good time because it's spring. There's so many colors out and about. Yeah, I I think it's the perfect time to kind of check in with yourself, reevaluate what your intentions were at the beginning of this year because it can feel so exciting. A new year, first week of January, like, okay, here we go, 2024. And then by the third day, you're like, it's still cold. It's still cold and dark. The days are dark. Yeah, I feel (laughs) like especially with daylight savings and and the days getting longer and the sun being out it just gives you a lot more hope optimism 
and encouragement to kind of go through whatever changes you want to or need to. You don't have to, yeah. but I don't know. I agree. I think that it's a really good time to kind of reevaluate where you're at and yeah. check in with yourself and say, what do I want my intentions to be? And I think the Gilmore Girls do that too because mm. in like season three, Rory's graduating, but Lorelai is deciding to open an inn and that comes to fruition at the end of season four, which we're about to get to. I'm so excited. Um, and I it doesn't wait. have to be like your season finale, you know, nothing dramatic has to happen, mm. but maybe you're just making a change at the end of this season mm-hmm. that we will see at the end of next season um, and see what how you change through your own season four before it's true. you open your inn. The inn yeah. in your life. <laughs> yeah, Whatever that may your, be. In your heart. <laughs> the yes. in your heart. Don't open an inn in your heart. That sounds highly illogical and <laughs> very unhealthy. A little dangerous. <laughs> um, but on that note, we wanted to list off some of the honorable mentions from our kind of listing season that we've had this year of listing how to have a Gilmore Girls fall, how to have a Gilmore Girls winter. Um, We listed a bunch of things that happen in the spring. Big life changes that you could choose from. We don't condone them, but we did want to gather them up if there was something that you felt drawn toward. Yeah. (laughs) Because the Gilmore Girls certainly did. Yeah. So, of course, we have... You know, what we just listed was getting engaged, sending someone flowers, going on a picnic. But we also have separate from your husband. Of course. Have an have affair. An affair. <laughs> that one's. Yeah. That, that. <laughs> Drop out of school. Drop out of school. Um, Steal a yacht. Go to jail. You know what I was <laughs> thinking about <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> you know when they have the... Um, you know when they have those memes that are usually like, take that chance, eat that second piece of cake, go get yourself a drink. And then it's just like, you know, like really encouraging. But then they have like parody ones that are like, you know, take that Run away. Break, run Move away. to the woods. Burn Forget someone's your house name. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this felt like. It was like, separate from your husband. Have an have affair. Have a picnic. Steal a yacht. <laughs> Go to jail. (laughs) Tutor someone into a car accident. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Skip your mother's graduation by following your not boyfriend to the big city. Yeah. Kiss someone who's not your boyfriend. Maybe in front of a lake. (laughs) At a wedding. Get beaked by a swan. Yeah. Get beaked by a swan. There's so many things you could do this spring. Um, We encourage you to make the right choice for you and for those around you. Mm -hmm. Um, But... We will let you decide which lists you would like to choose from. It's true. (laughs) It's spring. Bloom how you see fit. Yes. But speaking of spring and speaking of all the things you can do to have a Gilmore Girl spring, one of our favorite episodes that we talked about extensively here on this episode is a Tisca to Tasket. And uh, what we've decided to do is release our Gilmore Revisited version of a Tisca to Tasket that we released, gosh, was it? Last year or the year before? I think it was 2022. I think it was was. the the year. And I was actually really surprised that we hadn't released that episode on pod because I know it's one of your favorite ones. And that's kind of how we like to choose those as like big ones that like are in the series that everyone loves, but also like Mm -hmm. our favorites. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised that we hadn't. And now it feels like the first perfect time to put it out there. It's spring. It's your fave. Um, don't remember what we said. Not not a clue. <laughs> but I'm Can't really wait to listen. Convinced this is when I was in my Jess era. I think so. Could have been. Well, we'll have to see. And we'll yeah. have more to say on that in the next episode. Yeah.